So my name is Derek Schutt and I'm 54 years old. I went to school uh, as an undergraduate. I was a physics major. No, first I was an electrical engineering major. Then I was a physics major. Um, then I dropped out for a couple of years, uh, went back to a different college, um, was there for a year and a half, dropped out of there. I moved to Oregon where I tried to get a job and I didn't have much luck. I ended up working in factories and stuff. And, um, but I was able to finish up my degree remotely and um, spent a year or two trying to get good jobs and I couldn't get a good job. So I thought, hey, I'll go to graduate school. And I was gonna go to graduate school in physics. And along the way, I decided I had to improve my GPA to get into graduate school. So I got a second degree in math at the University of Oregon. And because I was a physics major, I'd like taken most of the math anyways. Along the way, I took a couple additional classes. I took one in like a general geosciences class, you know, geology 100, and I loved it. And I pestered the instructor constantly, even though there were like 200 other students. And he said, hey, you should be a geophysicist. And so I went to my advisor's, future advisor's office was, uh, they actually thought I was a thief because I had, I had long hair. And um, when I cleared that up, um, they said, oh yeah, we'd love to have you as a geophysicist. So I applied for graduate school and I got in and um, six years later I got a PhD and then it took me eight years to get my faculty job and I got my faculty job in 2008 and here I am. In the past I've worked 55 to 60 hours a week. I'm trying to work less and I think I've been successful in doing that. Um, my, my job is 40% research, 40% teaching, and 20% service. So what I do is I break up my days into chunks where I've devoted the chunk to research or teaching or service. Obviously, in the, during the semester, I spend a lot more time doing teaching than research and service. I'm really interested in mantle geophysics. So how does what happens in the Earth's mantle affect what we see at the surface? I started out working on Yellowstone. So um, we know a lot about Yellowstone on the surface, but what was below the crust was actually a bit of a mystery. And so my first project was to look at that and kind of figure that out. And I've since moved, um, I've been working on the Mackenzie Mountains in Northwestern Canada, which is a enigmatic mountain range. It's like 600 kilometers from a plate boundary, but it's uplifting currently. And it could be a, a model for how the Rocky Mountains uplifted. So we've put a bunch of seismometers out there and we're trying to figure out the forces and strengths that are producing the Mackenzie Mountains. I think the barriers that are out there are that we've ignored students of minority backgrounds for ages, and we need to improve how we recruit students, how we keep these students, and how we promote these students. Um, personally, I guess, I ended up in a slightly abusive graduate school situation. And I didn't know any better because I'm a first gen student. And so my, my parents don't have college degrees. And I, I guess I, I didn't uh, know how I was supposed to be treated. And uh, one thing I'd mention is the idea of having a mentor 
like I'd work in factories before I went back to graduate school and like the factory four person is not interested in being your mentor. So, um, you know, I just assumed my boss was my boss and not my mentor and other people around me who were more senior were just not interested in me. And so I, I never, um, developed that, um, in graduate school or even the years afterwards until I realized that, hey, there are people out there that are willing to help. I'm not sure if this answers your question or not, but I think we've realized that going to graduate school, especially in getting a PhD, um, we initially thought of that as just a way to become a professor. And now we realize that going to graduate school can lead to any number of careers, not only in oil and gas, which is sort of like the traditional route, but um, in sorts of in everything else. And I think employers are starting to realize that um, students with master's degrees and PhDs are actually quite useful. And so I, I think, um, in that sense, we've really starting to open up job options for um, students. So I grew up as a kid, I love science. I never thought about being a scientist because I thought scientists were like Einstein and I knew I was no Einstein. So, I never considered actually a career in science, even as an undergraduate. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll get a job as a technician somewhere. I, I guess the advice I would give is anyone can be a scientist. You just have to love it. And so if you have passion for what you do, then you can be a scientist. And you can be a scientist both in the academic world, but you can be a scientist outside the academic world too. And you can work for a company or you can work for a federal agency. You know, the, the possibilities are um, really unlimited. Mm -hmm.